very dreadfully nervous I had been and am, but why will you say that I am mad? <laughs> the disease had sharpened my senses, not destroyed, not dulled them. Above all was the sense of hearing acute. I heard all things in the heaven and in the earth. I heard many things in hell. How then am I mad? <laughs> Hearken and observe how, how healthily, how, how calmly I, I can tell you the whole story. It is impossible to say how, how first the idea entered my brain, but once conceived, it, it haunted me day and night. Object there was none, passion there was none. I loved the old man. He had never wronged me. He had never given me insult. For his gold, I had no desire. I, I think it was his eye. Ah. Hello and welcome. We're here to celebrate Edgar Allan Poe. It's his birthday. Uh, he would be 211 years old today. And uh, just a quick stream um, to get at this a little bit, share some uh, some cool things about him. He was a real, you know, pioneer. Um, one of the first real um, American literary geniuses, you know. And uh, first we're going to share his poem called Alone. From childhood's hour... I have not been as others were. I have not seen as others saw. I could not bring my passions from a common spring. From the same source I have not taken. My sorrow I could not awaken. My heart to, to joy at the same tone. And all I loved, I loved alone. Then, in my childhood, in the dawn, of a most stormy life was drawn. From every depth of good and ill, the mystery which binds me still, from the torrent or the fountain, from the red cliff of the mountain, from the sun that round me rolled, in its autumn tint of gold, from the lightning in the sky as it passed me flying by, from the thunder and the storm and the cloud that took the form. When the rest of heaven was blue, of a demon in my view. Hail the chat. Hail the chat. Sarah says is here. What is up? Nice to see you. DKOT Star Wars. What's up, my friend? Mogwai Centurion is in the house. How's it going? Dark Gift Comics Presents. What's up, my brother? Black Angus Reviews. How you doing, my friend? Thank you all for joining. Um, yeah, like I said, just a, a quick stream here. I wanted to talk about Edgar Allan Poe a little bit. And just get into uh, you know some of the some of the things that he did. Um, I don't know that he's you know obviously he's uh, appreciated, but I think he should be appreciated a little bit more. So what we got here is thirteen odd facts about Edgar Allan Poe. Um, not not so much odd, I would say, but um, yeah, you know, just facts. <laughs> he's the unofficial patron saint of the morbid, but there's more to learn about the Gothic granddaddy of American literature. Now, uh, DKOT Star Wars says Edgar Allan Poe would really appreciate it if you called him by his goth name, Night Paint. Um, yeah, <laughs> these days, were he alive today, you're probably right. Uh, there's, uh, yeah, the goths are interesting people. I spent some time with goths in my day. And uh, yeah, can't, can't deny that. Night Paint is probably where it's at. But yeah, upon the mysterious death of America's master of mystery and the macabre, the literary rival of Edgar Allan Poe wrote a scathing obituary and biography of the author. However, much of what was written by uh, Poe's foe Rufus Griswold was untrue. Vengeful over things Poe had written about Griswold, the later's uh, post-mortem portrait of Poe painted him as a womanizing madman, drug-addled, and bereft of both morals and friends. Now, if you've seen uh, 
the movie Poe. <laughs> this is pretty much how he's painted. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's hard to say, you know, none of us were there, but yeah, we'll continue. Uh, although far from the truth, many of Griswold's distortions stuck. It was the only biography of Poe at the time, and a well-read one at that. And in combination with the tone of some of Poe's work, it was convincing to a public wanting to believe in a scandalous darkness of the writer. Even though purported letters from Poe to Griswold proving his lunacy uh, were later found to be forged, and Poe's friends vehemently denied uh, the salacious slander, to this day, the image of Poe as a raving odd bird persists. So we're going to get into uh, some of the truths, I guess. <laughs> yes, damn you, Griswold. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, you know, we all have enemies, obviously. Uh, people who want to talk shit and uh, create problems. And uh, what better time to do it than when you're dead, right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess... Uh, you know that, but that was probably how Griswold truly felt. You know, and that that I would say is better than when somebody dies and everyone hails them as a saint, even though they were a complete piece of garbage. That's one. That's one of my pet peeves. <laughs> but uh, number one here, Poe was a literary trailblazer. Correct. Uh, Poe is best remembered for his for his tales from terror and haunting poems, but he is also credited as one of the earliest writers of short stories the inventor of the modern detective story and an innovator in the genre of science fiction. So how about that? <laughs> he was prolific. Uh, his works included short stories, poetry, a novel, a textbook, a book of scientific theory, and numerous essays and book reviews. Now that's, uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Um, you know, he was a writer that just got into everything, every little thing. And that much I can appreciate. Um, Miss Deadpool's in the house. What's up, my brother? Uh, I can appreciate that as well. Uh, but yeah, when, when you can branch out like that, it's um, it's pretty interesting, actually. Um, you know, I fancy myself as a bit of a writer, and uh, Poe is somebody I look up to. And, uh, you know, short stories, poetry, that, that's something that I think we all get into a bit, but we don't really put it out there. You know, a lot of times when a writer becomes a writer and... Um, you know, puts their work out there. They're kind of known for one thing or another. You know, there's a lot of textbook writers who really only write textbooks, even though in private they might be uh, doodling or writing short stories or poetry. You never know. Uh, looking into scientific theory, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> but uh, most of the time, yeah, people are kind of known for one thing, you know, um, shuffled into one category. But uh, Wookiee Supremacy's in the house. How's, how you going, my friend? Thanks for coming. Uh, Optimus Deadpool says, me, uh, heat wasn't on last night <laughs> in response to, uh, dark gift comics says what's shaking. Uh, okay. Got it. Got it. Got the joke. Got the joke. All right. Number three, he created a new profession. Poe was considered America's first well-known professional writer and thus starving artist. Uh, he eked out his living as a, a country's first great literary critic and theoretician. Now that's uh, oh, back in the day. I can only imagine, uh, you know, the term starving artist really applied then <laughs> much more so than it does today because, well, people were much poorer, you know, then it took a lot more to get your, your work out there and to be discovered. So yeah, that's quite an accomplishment. I would say uh, the first well-known professional writer uh, in America. Anyway, there were plenty of professional writers out and about throughout the rest of the world. But in the 1800s, yeah, America's just kind of get going. And uh, yeah, Poe was on the forefront of that. Number four, he was likely named after a Shakespearean character. Uh, he was born Edgar Poe in Boston, 1809. His parents were both actors and they both died when he was three, I believe. Uh, his parents were performing in Shakespeare's King Lear uh, the year he was born, leading to speculation that he was named for the play's Earl of Gloucestershire's son, <laughs> forgive me, I'm a little retarded sometimes, uh, Edgar. Okay, number five, poetry and pen ran in Poe's family. Poe was the, the middle of a uh, child of three. His brother, William Henry Leonard Poe, was also a poet, and his sister, uh, Rosalie Poe, was a teacher of penmanship. 8-Bit Elvis is in the house. How's it going, my friend? Thanks for stopping by. Uh, his writing befuddles me. <laughs> the language used for the time period makes my head hurt. I can I can understand that. Um, I, I'd rather like his writing. Uh, I like the style. 
but uh, I, I, I can understand how if you're not really used to it or it, you know, it could just not be to your taste. Um, I have personally have the same experience with uh, Tolkien's work. That might give me some booze, but uh, yeah, actually, I mean, I've, I've read his stuff, <laughs> but it was sometimes it was a struggle, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, you think Poe's bad. Jeez Louise, uh, pick up, pick up the Hobbit and see what you think of that. <laughs> Okay, uh, DKOT Star Wars says Poe didn't have an EBT card. That's right. Yeah, there was there was no such thing, <laughs> unfortunately. And uh, yeah, I mean, people used to really struggle, you know, and that's something that a lot of us don't understand. You know, we think we're struggling today. We don't know the half of it, brothers um, and sisters. You know, there's a <sighs> struggle is is a thing that. Uh, I think has kind of lost its meaning a bit. You know, there's a lot of help to be had these days. Um, back in those days, and not not so long ago, you know, it was neighbors helping neighbors, and that's how people got by. But um, yeah, today, you know, there's a lot of programs and uh, charities and just assistances that you can tap into. And uh, when we're struggling today, we're not struggling like uh, people were in the 1800s. Believe that. Uh, he was an orphan. Before Edgar reached the age of four, his parents died and he was taken in by a wealthy merchant named John Allen and his wife, Frances. They lived in Richmond, Virginia, and christened the boy with the name Edgar Allen Poe. Now, many people might not know that and uh, might not care, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, Sarah says, uh, not anymore. Yeah, that's that's right. There's not... Well, I'm assuming that's in reference to the uh, the struggling. <laughs> if that's the case, I agree. Yeah, people don't really struggle that much anymore. And, um, you know, there are some people who struggle, especially around the world in poorer countries and things of that nature. Um, some people on the streets in America are also struggling, you know, for real. And that's something we should pay more attention to, honestly. Uh, people keep to themselves. Yes, Sarah. Okay, so that was in reference to neighbors helping neighbors. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Uh, I don't know about you guys. I don't. I don't even really talk to my neighbors. You know, we'll we'll wave, we'll say hi on occasion. Um, that's only one or two. You know, the rest, it, no words. <laughs> and that's not really um, by choice. That's just kind of how it how it rolls. You know, if uh, I don't know, I'm pretty introverted. So if people don't reach out to me, I have a hard time reaching out to them. So I just kind of keep to myself, and and that's the way it is. You know, um, you know, a lot a lot of people right now are probably at church. And uh, the church used to be a big place to go for help, um, you know, when you need it. Uh, it used to be kind of a, you know, a local charity in its own right. And uh, church members would would notice uh, if somebody was struggling and they would just take it upon themselves to help them out. You know, you didn't have them people reaching their hands out a lot so much as uh, neighbors going to them and just really extending a hand uh, to help them out. And that's definitely something we've lost. Um, you know, I'm sure there's still a few churches here and there that do that, you know, that uh, really care about their members, but yeah, it's not, it's not nearly as common as it used to be. And people are just uh, generally showing, you know, showing their asses these days as uh, just selfish <laughs> for the most part. It's, it's kind of sad, you know, um, Mogwai Centurion I'm here. So I don't get fined. Okay. <laughs> Wookie supremacy. Uh, I don't know my neighbors. I just kick their dog. It, okay. Well, I don't know um, if I can endorse that. Uh, you know, some dogs are, are pretty irritating. They get on your nerves, you know, and uh, you want to kick them. But I would encourage you to suppress that urge, uh, Wookie supremacy. Just, you know, just realize dogs are dogs and, you know, they're going to be how they're going to be. You know, if they're coming at you, if he wants a piece of your leg, that's one thing. <laughs> if he's just being an annoying ass, that's another. Um, just my opinion. DKOT Star Wars says, I'm not even Christian, but if the story of a good Samaritan doesn't teach you how we should act, mm, right? Churches now answer to the state for food banks. Churches, uh, the state, food bank. Yeah, it's sad. It, it really is sad. You know, and that's, uh, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know why that happened. You know, I think it's just the, uh, a lot of it is the overreach of government. And here, I'm not going to get too much into politics, I promise you. I'm just, just pointing out what I see, um, you know, charity used to be charity and it's not so much charity anymore. Uh, now 
you know, money's taken right out of your paycheck to uh, force you to be charitable. And that's not, that's not productive. I don't think, you know, I've, I, what I've witnessed is when people want to be charitable, um, the people on the receiving end uh, that need the help are benefiting much, much more because people, um, you know, if you, if you want to give to something or someone, then you're going to try and help them out as much as you can. Whereas if you're forced to give, you want to help out as little as you can. That's just kind of human nature. Uh, Wiki Supremacy says he keeps telling me to kill people in reference to his neighbor's dog. Um, well, um, you might want to check out the, the Son of Sam. <laughs> just read up on that a little bit. And uh, yeah, get your head straight there, brother, because uh, that's 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 dangerous. Sarah says, don't be cruel. Yeah, agreed. Uh, what about here? Thanks for joining. How's it going? Uh, it says, as an anti-social society, all of, all of the pseudo-socializing happens via social media. Yes, that's very true. And also kind of unfortunate. You know, the, the internet is kind of a, a double-edged sword, I think, where, you know, we have more reach than ever now. We can contact more people than ever and uh, get our opinions out there, which oftentimes is hazardous. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, yeah, it's drawn people in. It's sucked people into the screen and nobody's noticing what's going on right outside their front door these days. And that's a big part of the problem. Again, in my opinion, uh, DKOT star Wars, I don't consider your social commentary to be politics. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, I try to avoid the subject of, of politics <laughs> and even social commentary a lot of times just because, you know, it gets you into trouble. People don't like to hear it. And uh, a lot of people um, will take something like that and just run with it. They're like, oh, this guy has an opinion. Uh, let's start some problems. <laughs> Wookie supremacy, you got to get off that dog, man. Just just, just, <laughs> just go about your life. Um, yeah, yeah. Just, just try your best to avoid the dog um, would be my advice to you, brother. Sarah says, if you're hearing voices, <laughs> you should go to the dicks. Uh, docs, docs, she met. Okay, that's better. Yeah, definitely go to the doctor. Um, avoid the dicks. Uh, no, Wookie Supremacy, most people's dogs do not talk. Um, at least not to, not to humans. Uh, they don't speak English. You know, a lot of times you can get a sense of what they're trying to say, as they can you. But, uh, yeah, actually talking, I think, uh, I think that's a problem, brother. And, uh, take Sarah's advice. Yeah, talk to the doctor. Uh, DKOT Star Wars, my neighbor's Wookiee. <laughs> Wookiee keeps telling me. Rrr. Sorry, I can't do the Wookiee uh, impersonation there. But yeah, back to this. Uh, number seven, he emulated Lord Byron. Mm, that's a handsome fellow right there. What do you think? He's got some, some masculine qualities and some feminine qualities. You know, it's a very masculine hand there, but that those features, that, that curly hair. Hmm. Okay, we'll move on from that. <laughs> Poe's foster father groomed him uh, to go into business and became a Virginia gentleman. But Poe dreamt of being a writer like his boyhood hero, the British poet Lord, Lord Byron. By the time he was 13, Poe had written enough poetry for a book, even though his headmaster convinced Poe's father not to allow its publication. Fucking headmasters, man. What do they know? <laughs> hey, uh, poverty was his muse. Uh, Post start uh, started on a college career, but the, the little financial support uh, from the miserly Allen, Poe embarked on a long journey of poverty and debt. Money problems haunted him, and tensions with his foster father prompted him into determination to become a successful writer. Now that's uh, a subject that uh, I I would like to touch on a little bit because. I don't know. Um, I'm sure we have a lot of creative types in here. And um, as a creative, I, I find personally that uh, when you're suffering, a lot of times that's when your best work comes to fruition. Uh, I see that in writing. I see that in music. Um, I see that even in acting. Um, that's uh, <laughs> it kind of sucks a little bit because, you know, I know I know I do my best work when um life isn't going very well, you know, cause I think that's, those are the times when you really put yourself into that world, you know, the world that you're working on, be it uh, storytelling or music or anything, you know, you're really focusing everything you have into that art uh, when you're suffering because you want it, you know, you're, you're looking for an out, you know, or just something to take your mind off of it. 
And, um, you know, the things that you like to do a lot of times will really help with that, uh, especially when you're creating. You know, I'm a tabletop role player, have been my whole life, well, pretty much since I was 13. And, uh, you know, running games, um, being a dungeon master, that kind of thing, game master, whatever you want to call it. Um, but, you know, when I was younger, that's what I would pour myself into when I was a miserable little shit. <laughs> Life wasn't going my way a lot of times. So, uh, you know, yeah, I would pour myself into that. It was like a, a job, you know, before I even had a job. And even after it became like a second job, just because that's what I wanted to do. You know, I didn't necessarily want to dwell in this world, but um, so I'd pour myself into that one. And that carries over into my writing as well. And I'm sure, you know, Dark Gift can tell you that I'm sure that carries on into his music also. Uh, what about says, if only you could talk to the dog like Dr. Doolittle, uh, the way that film flopped hard. Mm, yeah, yeah, it did. Uh, yeah, Wookiee Supremacy's dog has become a, a big ticket item here in the chat. Um, we're trying to get this guy some help. DKOT Star Wars says, got the German <laughs> nose. Speaking of Lord Byron, uh, I know all about that one. I'm sorry to hear that. Sarah says money problems haunts us all. Yeah, absolutely. And that's um uh, that's a part of it, you know, that's a part of it when you're uh following something that's non-traditional, um, a non-traditional career like writing or uh, drawing, being an artist, painting, what have you. Um yeah, money problems. <laughs> Come on, y'all, show some love to that like button. Thank you, DKOT Star Wars. Appreciate that. Please do. Please do smash that like button. I would really appreciate it. Uh, okay, Wookie Supremacy. I wonder if he thought in the future his work would inspire preteen weirdos to wear a black cape and cut themselves. <laughs> I'm guessing that wasn't on his mind, Wookie Supremacy. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, re I really doubt he thought too much into it. Um, you know, when you're working on uh, your own thing. You're just kind of working on your own thing, you know, uh, you're expressing yourself and not necessarily really thinking about how it's going to affect others or, um, you know, get into the minds of others. You know, the, a lot of the, the bigger properties that have been created that have really blown up, you know, like Star Wars, Harry Potter. I doubt uh, any of those people who created that stuff were really thinking, uh, except for maybe George Lucas, <laughs> he might have been thinking how it's going to go, but you know, it's just passion projects. That's what tends to blow up in my experience. That's what tends to catch people's attention and make other people fall in love with it is what's, what's in, you know, your passion project, what's in your heart, man. If you, if you put yourself into something that you're really passionate about and you really love other people are going to love it too. Uh, that's, that's what I've found. DKOT Star Wars uh, says, I have a weird process that involves a lot of procrastination. It's never good enough uh, yet to actually start. I hear you, brother. Um, I've been there as well. It's uh, it is a it is a problem. Procrastination is a real problem, especially when you have uh, other other things going on. You know, this isn't our creative uh, side doesn't really um, tend to become our full time jobs. You know, in real life. So uh, most of what we're doing here falls to the wayside. You know, it's it's on the side. We got to fit time. You know, whenever we can fit it in, whenever we get time for it, that's when we do it. And um, so, yeah, pr procrastination becomes a big part of it sometimes just because, you know, you've worked for eight to 12 hours a day. You come home, um, you know, you got to maybe wash the dishes from, <laughs> from breakfast or do laundry or clean up the house a little or, you know, what, what have you, what have you. But um, yeah, sometimes you just don't feel like it, man. You just don't feel like it. Um, you're thinking, well, you know, this is just something I like to do. It's not something I have to do. So yeah, fuck it. I'll do it tomorrow. But uh, it's a, it's a problem trying to break that pattern of thinking, but it can be done. Um, you know, if you put yourself on a schedule and just you start small, just a lot yourself, like say half an hour to an hour a day uh, is when I'm going to write or draw or, you know, work on my music, whatever you're doing. Uh, that's all you really got to do. But um, yeah, just kind of get into a, get into a habit, get into a pattern. And uh, that would be my advice to you. Dark Gift says, absolutely. I think in reference to the uh, Suffering Breeds, awesome <laughs> music comment. <laughs> uh, Sarah says, I'm a professional lazy butt. Yeah, I think um, that's everybody to an extent. You know, There's, some people are are slaves to the grind, but I think everybody just likes to kind of chill out and be lazy on occasion. 
Uh, Wiki Supremacy says goth kids are weird. Eh, sometimes, sometimes. Alpha Mar, what's up, my brother? Thanks for stopping by. It says no Lola for this stream. No Lola is traveling at the moment, <laughs> even though she popped in. How's it gone, Lola? <laughs> but um, yeah, this this was just kind of off the cuff, you know. I saw Edgar Allan Poe was trending, and I thought, what the hell? You know, that's a cool dude. Let's do a stream about him. So here we are. Uh, Sarah says, all kids are weird. I think technology helped them to be more so. Absolutely. <laughs> Agree with both of those points 100%. Dark Gift says, uh, that's my problem too, procrastination. See, it's not, yeah, it's 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 everybody really. I think so. You know, like I said, there's a couple people who just, you know, that's their life. They throw themselves into it. Uh, maybe they don't have anything going on outside of, you know, work and their passions, but, uh, a lot of us do. So you get distracted and it can be easy to get distracted. Uh, Lola says, what are we discussing this morning? Uh, we're discussing Edgar Allan Poe and it's kind of, uh, evolved into a conversation about, uh, neighbors, helping neighbors, as well as, uh, creative juices. <laughs> so that's what we're going with right now. And yes, we are also discussing Wookiee Supremacy's neighbor's dog. <laughs> it has become a real problem for him. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, Lola says, I'm the world's worst procrastinator. I doubt that. I doubt that. I've, I've seen some pretty bad procrastinators. I'm a pretty bad procrastinator myself. Um, Wookiee Supremacy says, I'll start procrastinating tomorrow. There you go. There you go, man. <laughs> it's all about goals. <laughs> Alphamar says if we get an award for procrastination, I'd get a million one. So yeah, like like I said, <laughs> we got a lot of procrastinators in here. It's just a natural thing, you know. It's a natural thing. And um, you know, sometimes we just don't have time, or sometimes we just don't feel like it. And that's uh that's what happens, you know. You, whatever. <laughs> I'll do it tomorrow becomes uh, the mantra. And Tomorrow becomes the next day, and then the next day becomes the next week. And before you know it, you're like, son of a bitch, I should have had this done a month ago. What's wrong with me? But um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with you. That's that's the the moral of the story here. There's nothing wrong with you. It's just uh just the way it is, you know? Life happens and you gotta deal with it. Hashtag procrastinate later. <laughs> Lola says homeschooling and procrastination don't go well together. I can imagine so. Yeah, that sounds like it might be a problem. <laughs> Back to Poe for a moment. Uh, he was a prodigy. He published his first book, Tamerlane, when he was 18. See, now that that is the antithesis of procrastination right there. <laughs> he was on his stuff, which is probably why he accomplished so much, but uh, unfortunately wasn't really recognized for it until long after his death. So the moral of the story here is, uh, you know, if you're not a procrastinator, nobody's going to appreciate you until you're dead anyway, right? <laughs> uh, number 10, he was disinherited. Uh, when Alan Poe died, uh, yeah, Poe was living in poverty, but he was left out of the will, uh, which nonetheless provided for an illegitimate child who Alan had never even met. Ouch, damn. Yeah, that That is a big ouch right there. Oh, families can suck, right? Yeah, they took this kid in and uh, yeah, just left him out of the will. Probably because of their differences, I'd imagine. Oh, man. Uh, Lola says, I have a shiny squirrel syndrome. <laughs> and I'm easily distracted. I think that's a lot of us. Uh, Sarah says, just life. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Brown CBR, what's up? Thanks for coming. Uh, it says, everything is shiny when you want to buy it. Damn right. Alphamar is agreeing with Lola, especially on open world games. Mm. <laughs> uh, Poe was seriously a sad character. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was. And I would love to see an accurate uh, portrayal, but, um, you know, it's kind of hard to say what that is because, you know, people read what they read, they think what they think. And, uh, I mean, who, outside of his family and friends who were dead <laughs> and probably never wrote about it, uh, who knows what this really looked like? You know, there's been movies made that uh, portray him as, you know, like we were talking about earlier, just the the raving madman and, and the drunkard. And But uh, there's, you know, there's three sides to every story, right? <laughs> Their side, the other person's side, and the truth. So, um, 
Yeah, yeah, sad character, but he, I mean, he accomplished a lot, and it's, uh, oh, such as uh, marrying his teen cousin. <laughs> uh, Poe married his first cousin, Virginia Clem, uh, when he was 13, and he was, he or when she was 13, and he was 27. Mm. Uh, she died at the age of 24 from tuberculosis. Well, that's sad. Yeah, he died at age 40. That's, uh, people didn't live very long in those days. Sorry for the muting. Got to clear my throat a little bit here. Don't want to do it in your ear. Um, so yeah, he obviously didn't procrastinate with uh, hitting up on his cousin either, <laughs> which is all good <laughs> by today's standards. Not so much. Uh, number twelve, he may have invented the art of snarky. Now this this is something to be celebrated. Poe acquired an editorial position at the soon-to-become-popular Southern Literary Messenger magazine, where he became famous for his scathing book reviews and uh, scorching critiques, which is where Griswold's ire was born. Ah, that's where the enemy was created. He went on to write for many magazines. Uh, the 1845 publication of The Raven made him a household name and finally secured him the success he had been seeking. The Raven. We all know The Raven, right? Uh, Aja Outlaw. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, thanks for joining. So I have a, a very, ah, sorry, a few very old dinner lectures that he gave. He by no means was mad. Uh, he would be what we call an out-of-the-box thinker. Now, it seems to be the truth that's coming to light, and that'd be cool, man. I don't know do if you stream at all, but uh, I think that would be really cool to check out those dinner lectures, man. Um, yeah, I think uh, a lot of times, again, talk, going back to the passion aspect, you know, when people are passionate about things, sometimes they can come off as, as raving and, uh, but they're not, you know, they're just, they're, they're really into what they're talking about. And uh, that's a good thing. It's definitely a good thing. You know, uh, Wookie supremacy says only if you factor in empathy. Um, sorry, not sure what that's in reference to. I must have lost it. I'm talking too much. I'm not used to doing these things solo. <laughs> so I'm just kind of talking here. Uh, Alphamar says Newton knew about gravity by procrastinating. How else did he observe gravity if he didn't do anything and just observe things falling? I absolutely. <laughs> Lilith says uh, she was the reason for him writing Lenore. Yes. Uh, in reference to his uh, cousin wife. Absolutely. Uh, quote the Raven, eat my shorts. <laughs> Apollo Patriots here. What's up, my friend? Uh, Pimpin' Fridays at Walmart. Uh, no Walmart today, unfortunately. I know that's going to upset you. Um, we don't have any Walmart girls. We do have this uh, post cousin that, that he married here. He can, uh, this is Virginia Clem. You can just consider her your Walmart girl for the day, Apollo. Uh, what he says, you spelled gimping wrong. Hmm. <laughs> Lola says I can quote Lenore from memory and uh, one of my favorite poems well Lola would you like a link because I can bring you on here I just uh, thought you might be a little busy for that uh, DKOT Star Wars says uh, we're all guilty of acting emotionally that's the truth right there and um, I don't know the older I've gotten I think the, the more tempered uh, my emotions have gotten you know they still swell sometimes but uh you kind of get that stuff in check as you age but every once in a while you know you'll, you'll still find something that uh, you're so passionate about that uh you kind of revert back to your younger emotional state <laughs> that's been my experience anyway um it doesn't happen often but when it happens um uh, it's a little little scary actually you know because uh it takes you back to what you were and sometimes it forces you to look at yourself and just kind of see what you've become uh, snow dubs in the house what's up my brother uh, he says happy sunday gays community go out and use your second amendment <laughs> and shoot a gun on this beautiful day absolutely um it is also today um besides being Poe's birthday it's also national gun appreciation day so uh yeah absolutely uh, hit the range take some some target practice go shooting if that's what you're into, um, yeah, have fun with it. Uh, Lola says the pit and the pendulum is one of the greatest post stories. I agree wholeheartedly. And I love that, uh, Vincent price was cast in so many of, uh, 
you know, story and movie adaptations of Poe's work. Vincent Price is the man, and I love that guy. I <laughs> uh, love his voice. I just love everything about him. His mannerisms, uh, just such a spooky dude. Uh, so that was a great loss. Uh, uh, Wiki Supremacy says, dude, looks like a lady. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Hail Open Carry, absolutely. Uh, Apollo Patriot. Uh, I might put that picture on my wall. Well, there you go. There you go. You can put it side by side with one of those Walmart ass crack shots. Uh, Sarah says, uh, yeah, I feel young, but I can't do half the things I used to more chilled out nowadays. Yes. Agreed, Sarah. That's totally, <laughs> totally. Um, yeah, I think I, I still feel young on the inside. Uh, you know, a lot of people tell me I'm not not old enough to be feeling old yet. Other people tell me I'm an, uh, a crippled old man and uh, I should just retire from life. But um, I feel I'm somewhere in between. You know, most days I'm feeling pretty good inside, pretty young. Uh, it's just when I try to move and do things that uh, my body reminds me that I am not. <laughs> oh, Lola. Uh, link is coming, Lola. Uh, let's see if I can keep talking here while uh, sending Lola the link. Uh, Wookie Supremacy says shoot some cans. Um, yeah, shoot. I mean, shoot whatever. <laughs> as long as it's not alive. <laughs> I think you're good. Um, yeah, I need to get back up to the range soon myself. I, I miss miss the range. I just got some uh, zombie targets for Christmas uh, from a friend of mine that I actually, I just got them uh, on Friday <laughs> as I met some friends that we don't, that we haven't seen each other uh, since Christmas and we just kind of exchanged then. But yeah, I got the, the blood targets. I've never had any of those. So I'm kind of anxious to try them out. Uh, Sarah, too true. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's uh Stay young at heart. Always stay young at heart. That's that's my advice. You know, your body's going to tell you different, but fuck it. You know, uh, as long as you're you're feeling all right in your mind and uh, you're not going off <laughs> a reservation there, I think you're okay. You know, just try to stay young at heart. Don't take anything too seriously. Definitely do not take yourself too seriously because that's when you run into problems. Uh, a lot of people take themselves way too seriously. And um, no, no, you're not... <laughs> You're not that serious. Nobody cares that much. Uh, you're not, you are not in fact a big deal. So just chill the fuck out and um, yeah, stay young at heart and uh, do, do the things you love, do the things that you're passionate about. Don't waste your time on uh, bitter SOBs. That's my advice. Number 13, his death uh, wasn't as enigmatic as his, enigmatic as his work. Uh, yeah, which means strange. <laughs> Thought-provoking. Um, unsolved mysteries, that kind of thing. Uh, in 1849, Poe went missing for five days and was found, quote, worse for the wear and delirious in Baltimore. He was taken to the hospital where he died soon after at the age of 40. No op autopsy was performed. Uh, the cause of death was listed as a vague congestion of the brain. And he was buried two days later. Experts and scholars have uh, proposed everything from murder to and rabies mm, to dipsomania and carbon monoxide poisoning as the reason for his demise. Mm. But to this day, the cause of Edgar Allan Poe's death remains a mystery. Could there be a more befitting legacy? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, that pretty much sums up the man. Am I right? You know, uh, just... Oh, this guy was awesome. And uh, just his work is, it's the shit, man. And his death is mysterious. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. That's totally fitting. Um, Alphamar asked, uh, do I play video games? I used to be quite a gamer, uh, mostly online gamer. You know, growing up, I was into Nintendo, Super NES, uh, Sega, all the console systems, PlayStation. But, um, you know, as uh, as I got older, I kind of evolved into a uh, computer gamer. So I don't play a whole lot these much uh, these days. I got into World of Warcraft, got sucked into that for a while and removed myself <laughs> at a certain point once I realized I had a problem. But uh, you know, every once in a while I'll fire up World of Tanks or uh, like a South Park video game or something. Not a whole lot of uh, constant gaming these days. What is up, Lola? How you doing? Good morning, Sunshine. How's it going? That's going well. It's going well, I think. Um, how's how's your travels? Few and far between. <laughs> You're not back on the road yet. No. Okay. Good. Good. Glad to have you. 
So you right, got a- So it's uh, Poe's birthday. Is that what you said? Yes, ma'am. I was thinking of Annabelle Lee, not Lenore. I don't know why I kept thinking of Lenore. <laughs> well, that's all right. You got a lot of these memorized, do you? Um, I'm a huge Poe fan. I like took a class in college on like um, gothic literature. Mm-hmm. So I learned quite a bit about Poe in that class. So is any of this ringing true to you? Have you heard anything that sounds like a falsehood? Um, not so far, but I tuned in a little late, so. Okay. <laughs> now, Wookie Supremacy has a good question. DKOT Star Wars. Uh, what does the DKOT stand for? I've been wondering that myself. Uh, Sarah says I'm past that. Let's see. Oh, I done screwed up. I'm, I'm reading response quotes. <laughs> I missed the original uh, statement. Um, what about says, I think John Cusack played Eddie Allan Poe in a biopic. Yes, he did. And uh, that's one of, one of the ones that uh, portrayed him as a raving lunatic. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was still enjoyable, though. I, I liked it. What did they like to portray him that way, though, because he was a drunk. Right, right. Yeah. Like I the, that was... that's, I mean, his. His life, he didn't become famous till after he died. You know, he didn't make money or anything. Right. He died broken in a gutter. Yep, that's uh, the way I imagine I'm going to go. I should hope not. <laughs> well, at least in a gutter. I don't know about broke. I would like to die wealthy in a gutter. <laughs> Nobody wants to die in a gutter. <laughs> well, speak for yourself. They literally found him, like, in a ditch. <sighs> Yeah. Alfmar uh, has a question. I think the better question is, why is Lola's profile pic a sexy butt? Because it's always been a sexy butt. <laughs> Lola's into the asses, in case you didn't know. I'm into women looking like women. Well, there you go. Uh, DKOT Star Wars says it's the name of my first, uh, which is all gaming now, and I kept the brand. That's not... Uh, that's still fairly mysterious. You need to know. Right. <laughs> Are you interested? Do the letters know? actually stand for anything, or is it just a bunch of letters thrown together? Yeah, that's what I want to know, man. Wookie Supremacy says, I guess that'll do it. No, it won't. <laughs> we need to know what those letters stand for. Now that it's out in the open, we need to know. Uh, DKOT Star Wars says, I uh, love the Dark Knight and used, uh, used to love the Game of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dark Gift, Dark Gift's heading to work. Thanks for coming, my friend. We'll catch you on the next one, hopefully. Dark Gift. <laughs> uh oh, yeah, conspiracies abound. Wiki supremacy. We're not going to answer that question. It remains a mystery. <laughs> Where would the fun in it be if I told everyone? Well, yeah. Oh, wow. He's really upset. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, Dark Gift says, I assume OT is for original trilogy. So Dark Knight original trilogy? Is that what it is? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so do you know any fun facts about Poe that you'd like to share that we haven't covered or you haven't heard covered since you joined? Um... I think he covered most of them. He married his second cousin. She died. He never found anyone else to love. He just kept writing, hoping to become, you know, a big writer. And nobody wanted his work because it was all dark. Is that the reason it was too dark for people? Yeah. <clears throat> we gotta think like. He was in a time when, like, Christianity was the thing, and so people wrote fairly upbeat, happy stuff, and here he was writing, you know, the telltale heart. Gotcha. Okay, we have uh, an official answer here. He said it twice, he says. (laughs) Uh, His name is James, also known as Dark Knight of Thrones. All right. Awesome. I'm not going well, to. We didn't want that. you to dox yourself. Jesus. <laughs> well, he didn't give his last name and address, you know. It's all right. 
Oh, Wookie Supremacy. Dark Knight of Thrones, you're so bad at keeping up with the chat. Yeah, I can be. All right. I can be. I'll admit that. I have my shortcomings, but I try. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> it's early. Yeah, yeah, that's a good excuse. It's early. It's early. It's not even... Have you had your caffeine yet? Because I've just got my caffeine. I've had two cups of coffee, which usually doesn't do it for me. Uh, after four, I'm functioning properly. All right. After two cups, you should be good to go. Okay, well, thanks for having my back, Lola. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, did Edgar Allan Poe write mystery? Yeah, kind of. You got, you got an answer for that, Lola? I wouldn't call it mystery. I would call it more like death and despair. So you're saying he was problematic. <laughs> I think it was from like the life that he lived though, you know, like everyone he loved died. He was disowned. Yeah. Written out of the will, no less. Yeah. Like, yeah, he had like a problematic childhood. His father was an alcoholic. Aren't they all? <laughs> now wait a minute Wookie Supremacy why does Sarah get a pass and I do not sounds a little sexist to me because <laughs> you're old no I think it's because you're a lady Sarah and Wookie Supremacy is all about the ladies as am I <laughs> okay so Edgar Allan Poe is an ancient edgy writer says Alpha Mar. yeah pretty much I don't I mean agent might be pushing it, but <laughs> older. <laughs> Olden days. Like early nineteen hundreds, late eighteen hundreds. Wiki Supremacy says I am the sexiest sexist. I have to agree. I have to agree. Every time I see that uh you know, proper picture of Chewbacca there, um uh, I'll just I'll just leave it at that before the stream gets out of hand. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, celebrate Edgar Allan Poe today. It's uh, it is trending on Twitter, so you can take a look there. Uh, scroll through. There's quite a few people just posting his work, posting artwork. Um, yeah, and saying what he means to them, which uh, might come off as a little gay to you, but. Uh, you know, some, some things people are passionate about, and a lot of a lot of people are passionate about Edgar Allan Poe. This is true. Yeah, man. Uh, Sarah, I don't know what you're apologizing for, but don't you worry about it. Whatever it is, don't you worry about it. It's all good. <laughs> uh, for chatting away. Well, you are in a chat, Sarah. That's okay. You're, you're welcome to chat it up. Um, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing in a chat. Yeah, exactly. I, I like when you guys are interacting with each other. This is... Uh, yeah, pretty much an open forum. If you guys want to talk to each other about things we're not talking about, feel free. Uh, that's entirely up to you. But um, yeah, so I didn't want to go too long with this today. I just kind of wanted to do a quick stream here in the morning because I felt like it. Let's <laughs> feel my hoots a little bit. And uh, I'm glad you stopped by, Lola. I appreciate you. I know, bro. I saw you talking about Edgar Allan Poe. Like I said, I took a class in college where like all we do is talk about Poe. So... <laughs> And I thought it was kind of funny. Today's Poe's birthday. Tomorrow's Martin Luther King's. So, yeah, actually, there's a couple. Um, I brought this up earlier. Uh, birthdays today. Actually, this is Dolly Parton's birthday as well. Also, Janis Joplin. Uh, I'm not sure who this guy is. Uh, Paul Cezanne, a French Cezanne. painter. Cezanne. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> and of course, Robert E. Lee. <laughs> so that's an interesting cast of characters to be born on the same day. Pretty much. But yeah, that's uh, that's it. We're going to wrap it up here. Uh, thanks, everybody, for stopping by. Uh, I'll just read a couple more of the chats real quick before we go. Uh, DKOT Star Wars says, you keep me drawn, and it's a smooth radio voice. And thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Hollow Patriot says, I feel like that picture of the person is a pimp. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I would definitely say Poe was a pimp. If he wasn't in his day, he definitely is now. Uh, Alphamar says, if Mahler and Red Gaze ever stream together, I'd be confused who is who, plus I'd have <laughs> a voice gasm. 
Well, you're welcome to, you know, what you, what you do in the privacy of your own home is up to you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Anybody wants to 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 fap it a little bit uh, while we're streaming, that's fine with me. Uh, Wookie says, "Cool, get back to my neighbor's dog now." <laughs> Wookie, leave that dog alone. <laughs> What's wrong with the neighbor's dog? I missed that part. Well, I'm not sure uh, that we really got uh, an explanation for why he hates the dog. He just hates the dog and likes to kick it. I guess, I guess <laughs> it's just annoying. <laughs> Don't kick the dog. Thanks for coming, my friend. Uh, didn't see it until now, but I appreciate you. Uh, Sarah says, yeah, you both got good voices there. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, sound a bit like Sutherland. Hmm. Is that true, Lola? Sure. <laughs> uh, you do have a good radio voice. Like, we've all been telling you that. Yeah, I've, I've heard. I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, appreciate everybody for stopping by. Thank you for the compliments. Appreciate that as well. And uh, Lola, thank you for stopping in. No problem. And we will catch you on the next one. Peace.